This is code.org. I'm currently working on CS Principles Unit 5, Building Apps, Lesson 14, Building an App Image Scroller, uh, Puzzle 10, Final Image Scroller. You're now ready to add key event functionality to your app. Woo! As you are doing so, keep an eye out for places where you need to refactor, right, change up old code. Uh, in order to prevent redundancy, so if we're copying and pasting code or code's the exact same, we should use a function. Create functions that carry out repeated tasks and make other changes to keep your code readable and consistent. If you want a reminder of how key event works, you can always go back to an example from earlier. You will need to add if statements to check for which keys were pressed. Add the ability to respond to key events. Refactor your old code to remove redundancy. Keeping, keeping adding to your program, what other features do you want to include? All right, so we want to do key presses, and that is, all right, so let's start with our if statements for key presses. We're going to need to create um, on event handlers for left key and right key. The ID of what we're going to be changing up with. Okay, we only need the one. I'm already forgetting. So, we want... Uh, it would be on the screen if either key was pressed. Okay, so what did I name my screen? I named my main screen. All right, so we're just going to do it generally on the screen. Um, and it is going to be, I want to look for a key down, key press, key down. And then now we have an if statement we need. Okay, and if, I'm going to add the if else. Perfect. And what are we going to check? Well, it's just like before. Event dot key. Okay. So hey, event dot key equals if it is equal to left, we're going to do something. And if it's equal, oh, I just noticed we need event here for our parameter. Remember, that's the thing that carries all that information about what's going on on the screen, like where the mouse is at, yada yada. So left, and then event dot key equals equals in quotes make sure you put the keys name in quotes i believe it would be right all right and then so what do we want to do well just like before if the next key is pressed it we want to do the same thing on the right arrow key right so if we're going to be copying and pasting code so on the last button or on the next button we should create a function and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to write function. I'm going to write function. And then what should my function name be? Um, I'm going to kind of follow the similar pattern to what we did before. And I'm going to say do next. Okay. And then put ba. And then function do last. Okay, because we're going to want one for both, for forwards and backwards. All right, so uh, actually, let's do go next, maybe. Whoops. I'm going to say go next, go last. Okay, that makes a little more sense to me. So now I need to grab the next button stuff, and I can cut, right-click cut, and then next button should go next, paste, and then last button... Since we want to use all this code, but we want to use it several times, right? So this is abstraction, all right? So now we're going to use both parts of this code in here. And then instead of writing this each time, I can just write go next and uh, go last when the last button is pressed. Let's check out these blocks. Okay. And what should occur is these functions should run then. Let's just test. 
and mine loops around that's some code I added so that is working now what is happening a few things remember we have a global variable here every function in our code can access item index uh, you might have called zero something different and what that means is when I hit go next we add one to my our item index and then we're running if item index is less than the length so we're making sure it's actually less than uh, the length if that is the case if that is if it's less than the length we're setting it equal to zero that's what makes it repeat but we're updating the screen what's update screen well that's another function way down here way down here and what it does is um, it first and we added this in the last one it's first going to change your image and then it should update this number okay and so that's go next and go last are now run the same way it's just that we move their code into the function because now we can also add a um we can also add them down here to left arrow key and right arrow key so we're going to say now in left arrow key right arrow key well the left arrow key we would want to go last and the right arrow key we want to go next and remember what these are doing is if i look at go next when i run that right when i hit the right arrow key hopefully go next executes it goes up here it runs this function it's going to add one to our global variable item index and why that matters is when i run update screen item index is used here so it looks at our favorites array, right? Our array of pictures, and it says, give me the last index. Well, and I just changed it. I either added it or decreased it by one, depending on if I hit last or next. So then the picture will change because the array index, the item index has been changed. And when this function runs, it looks at the array, it grabs the index before or after that. It then puts it out onto the page and we change the number. So let me test my keys. Here's my le uh, left arrow key. And I can do this because mine loops around. Something I added. And right. But uh, uh That photo so bad. I just found it on my site. It is supposed to represent YouTube. That's from one of my videos. Uh, and that's some JavaScript code. Yay, JavaScript. And some old school teacher. Awesome. So, woo. I think we got... Keep adding to your program what other features. Well, it already loops. Refactor your old code. We definitely did that. It's really critical. Um, abstraction is a huge part of programming. You want to eliminate redundancy in code. So I'm going to just for organization grab some of my functions here. Like last and next, we use both twice each. So there's no reason to have that code written twice. You can just create a function and call it. The code looks cleaner as well. Let's see, show blocks. It's nice to keep your functions together. Uh, I like it. Usually functions would go at the top of code, but JavaScript's more forgiving, which is what we're programming in. Update screen. Awesome. Well, that is good for me. I'm going to, yeah, keep going. These functions are a bit tricky. All right, onward.